are listening to Kelly and Laura. We are just two unfiltered mums here to share the raw reality of parenthood. And on today's episode, we will be talking about our childbirth experiences. I think I'm getting palpitations just thinking about it, Laura. (laughs) So I think it's important to say that um, two out of the three births between us were not that positive and didn't (laughs) go as planned but we really want to obviously share our reality of these births because clearly they do happen but it's important to say that we will also get guests on that did have a more positive experience um, later down the line as well so that we can Mm -hmm. give people the full breadth of experiences so did you have any early labor signs with Mila Cow or we just straight in I was straight in. Really? (laughs) Yeah. So I was getting very impatient because I was five days overdue. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was bouncing on a ball like there's no tomorrow. And um, yeah, I literally, I think it was 4am, Connor was leaving for work. And I thought, oh, I've got a bit of a bit of a stomach ache. I thought, maybe I'm just a little bit hungry. Didn't even cross my mind it might be me going into labour, literally. <laughs> uh, you know, 5.30 five in the days. morning. Yeah, 5.30 in the morning, I'm just, you know, toddling down. I say toddling down, waddling down uh, the <laughs> stairs and just make some cocoa pops and thinking, oh, I'm just a bit hungry. Um, made absolutely no difference. And I remember ringing Connor. It was about, yeah, half five. And he hadn't even got to work yet. And he was like, what's happened? And I was like, I was like, I'm just getting a little bit of discomfort. I don't think it's anything. It's probably nothing. And he was like, well, you are overdue. It's probably labor. <laughs> and I thought, no, I think I'm just hungry, a bit of a stomach ache. Um, anyway, he said, look, give me a call back in an hour. So waited an hour. And in that time, things got a little bit more intense. And they were generally very constant. So I thought, oh, this is definitely something. Um Anyway, Connor rings me and I said, yeah, I, I think this is here to stay, to be honest. <laughs> and he said, right, I'm coming back. So he, bless him, he'd only just got to work and did like a quick brief. <laughs> and then he was back in the car, oh, bless like him. a two hour journey. So um, best decision he ever made, because if he hadn't come back then, oh my gosh, I think I would I would have got quite stressed. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So um, he comes back in that time. I thought, right, I'm going to get a rom-com on. I'm going to have a shower, you know do everything that I can to make myself feel a bit more relaxed and started my breathing, all that stuff. And I think I lasted till about midday and my contractions were lasting about two minutes. So they're really quite intense. And I was like, you know, really, I'm ready to go down. I can't really manage much longer. And that's when we rang triage. It did take 63 calls to get through to triage. 63 calls? Yeah, I was really panicking because I thought, oh my gosh, typical me to have to give birth on a day where, like, the labour orders just... Baby day. <laughs> yeah, every- <laughs> everybody's having their baby. Um, but, you know, actually, when we got there, it wasn't that case at all. They were just having a cup of tea, obviously. Um, <laughs> so, no, managed to get through and we did head down. But I know... So, the answer is no. I didn't have any early signs. It was literally straight into it. But I know yours was... A little bit different because I remember turning up at your house, well, actually coming to your house thinking, should I be here because you're having like contractions? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so I had Braxton Hicks with both George and Isla. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously with George, didn't really know, well, obviously I'd heard of Braxton Hicks, but I didn't really know what they were. So at 36 weeks, we thought we were going into labor, but obviously we weren't. So Braxton Hicks is just like the tightening of the con- yeah they're like contractions but just without the pain it's your body like practicing what labor is going to be like so I had those from 36 weeks and Matt had downloaded the app that you can get because it has to be every five minutes a contraction coming every five minutes for at least an hour before we could ring the hospital mm-hmm. so he had this app that does it all for you so you basically just hit the button every time a contraction starts stops everything but to be honest, we got sick of it because they would come and they'd be like, right, this is it. And we'd get to that half an hour and then they'd just stop. And it was like, mm. oh, and honestly, that happened for a couple of weeks. And it was just so... Was it weeks, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because crikey. they started getting... Because I didn't know whether they were real labor pains or not. 
And because mm. they were coming, you know, for half an hour at a time consistently, we had to time it just in case because we didn't know with George. Goodness. We'd never, do you know what I mean? It was our first one, so we had no idea. Whereas with Isla, I was like, yes, it's fine. That's why I said to you, just come over. <laughs> yeah, you Nothing's did. happening. You were like, um, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Um, please yeah. don't go into labor right here right now <laughs> um, so yeah with George that essentially just kept happening and then I woke up one morning at like six o'clock left Matt asleep because I was like I'm just timing them by myself put the tv <laughs> on started timing them and then I was like oh it's now been an hour and a half and they're now coming every sort of four minutes mm. um and also quite painful actually having to definitely really? breathe through these ones yes yeah, so I was like <laughs> Hmm. I need to wake up Matt so I woke up and I was like I think this I think this one is real and he was like yeah okay whatever I was like no seriously I've been up for an hour and a half he's like oh my god oh my god okay like went straight into panic mode so that's when we rang the hospital and they were really chilled and were like yeah take your time yeah so yeah so that was that was it with George and that's when we headed in um and Isla was obviously very very different because it was planned so um mm-hmm. I, w- I did still have sort of the Braxton Hicks into slow labour, we'll call it, with her as well. Mm-hmm. Did um I remember I remember when I was on the phone to triage, they were like, Have you taken the paracetamol? I'm thinking, Karen, paracetamol don't even get rid of a headache for me, let alone contractions hey. of <laughs> my uterus. No, they did not. Thankfully, I think for their sake, they did not ask me to take a paracetamol. No. Oh, <laughs> Gosh. I've never heard that before. Yep, yep. They, they're so calm, their end, aren't they? Well, yeah, they do this day in, day out, don't they? So yeah. It's not a biggie for them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, though, I was on the phone and she did ask me a very important question about movement. So yeah. I was on the phone and she said, right, Kelly, have you felt baby move today? And I kind of remember thinking, hmm, do you know what? I I'm not sure, I said, because if I'm honest, the contractions have overpowered. That's what I've been Mm. focusing on. Um, And also you said last time that Mila didn't have regular movement anyway. So not something that you'd have necessarily been thinking about at that time. No, it wasn't like I was ringing them to say I'm concerned about movement. I was ringing them because I was in labour. So, you know, we pack our stuff. Well, it was already packed, thank God. Um, Off we go down to the hospital and, you know, we assume that we're there purely because I'm in labour and they kind of hook me up to the monitor and normally if I've been in that situation before any kind of queries of movement in general she starts kicking and she's absolutely fine um this time she just wasn't moving but I said it's not abnormal especially in the middle of the day for her to be quite quiet so I wasn't panicking about that Mm -hmm. but because I was overdue there was some concern about you know is baby okay? Is is there any distress? So I was in a situation where, if I'm honest, I was in a very uncomfortable situation where I felt quite pressured to make a decision whether I was to be induced or not. And my plan was to try and be as natural as possible with the birth. I wanted to, for it to just all happen when she was ready to come out. Mm. And I remember being on the bed and a doctor walked in who actually I'd never met or had a conversation with prior and said you are five days overdue you are risk of having a stillborn baby you need to be induced and chucked a leaflet out to me and the bed and just walked out oh my so after just dropping that bomb yeah of potentially having the stillborn yeah I mean such catastrophic language I mean I was already you know anxious in a lot of pain (laughs) everything and I'm thinking now oh my goodness and I just felt really pressured into doing something that I wasn't comfortable with at that moment in time if it had been a life or death situation as in Kelly we know babies are in distress we Mm -hmm. need to intervene now I would be a hundred percent you you do what you need to do to keep baby safe and oh yeah of course yeah yeah but it wasn't at that point and it was because it was very it was all on me to say whether I felt her move or not. And I remember like really being so conscious of trying to feel for movement that it kind of made me so anxious even more. And I was mm. panicking and I, I probably was stressing her out to a degree anyway. But yeah. yeah, that was a very 
uncomfortable time and unfortunately they only wanted to really speak to me as well and Connor was trying to explain because he knew exactly what I wanted and what I didn't want at that point and uh, I couldn't really speak you know I was in that much pain my contractions yeah. were lasting a long time at this point they were about two to three minutes and I'd only dilated one to two centimeters I was like really what? yeah yeah it was so abnormal so everybody kept telling me kelly you're gonna have this baby in a minute i'm like oh my goodness am i am i and then they would check again and i hadn't progressed at all in regards to dilation so and that was quite soul destroying because i was thinking oh my god it's gonna get worse yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, really, i thought it'd be nearly over by now yeah <laughs> so it was quite uh yeah, a really stressful time to the point where I kind of plodded on. They kind of left me to it for a while and it got to about eight o'clock at night and there was a changeover of, of doctors and sister and the, I spoke to a lovely doctor who said to me, look, Kelly, why don't you go home? I was like, oh God, oh, <laughs> okay, no. um, go home, have something to eat. You're in your own environment and you can relax as much, much as you can. Um, yeah. And if you don't feel baby, move at night time now, which is typically when she would be more, um, uh, would move more. Um, if you don't feel her then, come straight back. And I was like, that's all I wanted. But I remember <laughs> I remember walking out of the hospital. I couldn't even walk, I was in that much pain. My contractions were lasting like two to three minutes with hardly, with seconds in between. Like it wasn't like a standard, you get your minute break where you can breathe through it. And I remember saying to Connor, why, why are we leaving this hospital? Like, I yeah, feel like crazy that yeah, you're really leaving. Like baby's going to come, you know, yeah. shortly. But we went back, whacked in, frozen pizza. That's a good tip, guys, before you uh, <laughs> give birth. <laughs> Buying some frozen foods, stick yeah. them in the freezer. Really good tip. Um, and as soon as I took a couple of bites of pizza, she started kicking. And I yeah. thought, one, I was so relieved. But at the same time, I wasn't just relieved of movement, but I was relieved that I actually stuck to my guns and actually wasn't pressured into making a decision that I didn't want to go through with. Absolutely. Um, so I was quite proud of myself in that. And yeah. lucky Connor was, you know, supportive and of my decision. So, and then we hung on there until about midnight and then I thought I was going to die. So uh, <laughs> I was like, it's time. I was like, I need to go. Um, so yeah, and then we headed headed back in uh and headed back in for established labor <laughs> for established labor and i was only <laughs> still two centimeters at that point oh so yeah that was it was a really really hard start and bear in mind this is like you know this is hours now i've yeah. already been started at 4am the previous day so i was gonna say you're into like day two yeah mm. but dilation yeah for me was a big issue i don't know about yours in regards to dilation I think well with George so once we'd then rung the hospital and the contractors were regular enough they're like yeah come in but again like you said super chilled just yeah don't rush you know I'm in the car like hurry up <laughs> having these contractions um and then we yes yeah, so we got to the hospital so important to say that I gave birth to George during the pandemic so July mm. 2020 um so the rules on visiting and birth partners and things were really really strict it was the first end of the first lockdown I think so um their rule at this hospital I know they were all different but our hospital it was you had to be four centimeters um before your birth partner could come in and that's mm -hmm. what they classed as established labor mm -hmm. so I had planned a water birth as well so that was at a different level in the hospital than the labor ward and I actually walked into the labor ward, like reception, having contractions. And I was like, oh, I, I called this, you know, this is my name. And they were like looking at their notes. I'm there having a like contraction <laughs> against like the reception. Let me they're just like, check. <laughs> yeah, they're like, let me just, say, I haven't got your notes. And I'm like, oh, have you not? <laughs> She's like, no. She goes, are you, what sort of birth did you have? And I was like, oh, well, I wanted a water birth. Like, oh, that's level, that's level seven. I was like, cry, right? <laughs> Oh, right she's like yeah yeah the lift's just down there i was like obviously i'm on my own with all like the bags oh. and i'm like can i offer like you to sit in a chair or something and no. wheel you to the lift at least <laughs> no so i'm waddling to this lift like contracting oh, no. and luckily there's this gorgeous nurse who's like oh you look like you need a hand i was like <laughs> i need something um so luckily she then helped me with my bags and but obviously i was on my own so then we went i went to the right level um 
and they said oh well we'll just get you in for we'll just examine you and see where you are um and it turns out my Braxton Hicks had actually been slow labor so Mm. when I got there I was four centimeters and this was only like an hour and a half after we called the hospital oh aren't you lucky (laughs) mate I wish so I then had to call Matt and he'd parked the car and he had like his Netflix, he had his books, he had, you know, he was ready just to chill out. He was like, there's an MS like at the tax hospital, like I am just sorted. Yeah. And then yeah, I called him and it'd been like not even half an hour. And he was like, What? Uh. I was like, you, you get to come in. He was like, What? I was like, Yeah, it's it's go, go, go. We're having this baby. <laughs> so which was nice that I wasn't in there very long by myself. Um and then yeah, he came in and we we strutted into the um the the room at the pool and I was like we're gonna be home tonight with a baby we are so <laughs> I've got this I have got this to the point where she offered Matt a cup of tea and I was like and we put the music up and I was like oh I'll have one as well she was like <laughs> really I was like oh yeah give me two sugars might need the energy <laughs> Thinking, so cocky I'll only be in here for an hour love and then I'll be home yeah and uh that is, it's karma I yeah couldn't have been more wrong but yeah I was then let's say in established labour in the pool thinking I got this you got but this but I didn't no <laughs> what about I your water though did your water break in the water no so I kept asking that question because there was me being really cocky nine hours later I'm still in this bloody pool and like nothing much had happened <laughs> apart from me still having contractions and having gas and air um, and I kept saying, how will you know? And she was like, you'll know. I was like, yeah, but how? I'm in the water. How would you know my water's break? And she was, she just kept looking at me like, you will know. Um, <laughs> but after, how, I can't remember how many hours it was, I had an examination um, because I think she thought as well, like with how cocky I was and being four centimetres when I came in, she was thinking it'd be a quick one as well. Mm. And she examined me and then my water's broke. Um, so lucky, you know, Matt was at the party end. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Told you you'd know. <laughs> so, uh, so did she break your waters? Yeah. Oh my god, that's how, that's what happened to me. Oh, what with an examination? Yeah. So when I went back in and I was like two centimeters, I think I got to four centimeters, and she was like, "Oh, see, you've you know dilated very quick now." All of a sudden, like within like the half an hour or something. And oh, I was okay. Like, so okay. yeah, that is quick. Yeah. So I was like, excellent. This is gonna. This is it now. Um, and she was like, I can feel your water there. And she was like, oh, oh, no. And I was like, oh, gosh, what? She goes, sorry, I've just accidentally broken your waters. I was like, cheers, mate. Thank you. Um, and what felt like 100 literally went to 1,000 within seconds. Yeah. And then she went, oh, no. And I was like, God, what now? And she, said, <laughs> she was like, oh, I'm really sorry, but baby's pooed in you. And I was like, oh, God excellent but i didn't really know what that meant if i'm honest i just thought oh dirty bugger well um, it means a sign of distress but right this yeah, had happened exactly. with george yeah well exactly is that what happened he pooed in but, you. yeah but she said oh well it's a few days ago it looks like and in oh. my head i'm thinking surely that's horrendous but she seemed really calm about it but for you it was a sign of distress right yeah so she said baby's pooed in you and she said what's your birth plan and I said, well, you know, I'm envisioning this lovely water birth. <laughs> I'm waiting to get in there and chill and like Laura on have level my seven. cup of tea. <laughs> um, and she was like, look, you've got to scrap every plan now. She said, that is not going to happen. You're going to have to be hooked up to a monitor and monitored now just because the baby's pooed in you. So I was like, excellent. Um, okay, this is time for the painkillers because I'd been on gas and air. And I'm, I'm not kidding. Some people swear by gas and air. I think you were high as a kite. I loved it. Oh my God. (laughs) I loved it. Well, it did absolutely nothing for me to the point where Connor literally gets up and is like, is this on? He's like, he's like fiddling with it. He's like trying it himself. He's like, he's like, I don't know whether there's anything coming out of this. Um, Did absolutely nothing. And I have to say, before going into labour, I was very, I want to do this as naturally as possible. Gas and air, fine, but I don't want anything, you know, like pethidin. I didn't want 
epidural. I didn't want anything invasive like that if I could help it, unless it was absolutely necessary. Mm-hmm. And at that moment in time, when she said, scrap your plan A, I was like, get me the drugs. Um, <laughs> yeah. Literally, I was like, I would have broken into a cupboard. Um, so that was kind of the the direction um, that it went in. But it was also, she said, oh, I'm a bit concerned because you've um, got some bleeding. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm not going to lie. I didn't have a clue. Well, and, and at this point, I'm in that much pain. I'm mooing yeah. like a cow. And, mm. you know, it just... It didn't mean much to me, if I'm honest. I think poor Connor had to watch and live through it. I think he was kind of listening to it. I was obviously going through it, but at the same time, probably not, not really understanding. With it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was really struggling to the point where she was, my contractions were now lasting five minutes at a time with oh my literally days. no break. So I'm constantly in, in, in pain and, and screaming. I couldn't control my, myself. Um, and she was like, "It's your contractions are so abnormal. And you kept saying, you can have this baby, you can have this baby any minute now, Kelly. But I still was four centimetres dilated. And I'm you thinking, just weren't dilating. No. So I remember her calling the delivery unit and saying, look, we're going to take you down because something is, something's happening here. You're basically in end, end stage, stage labour in regards to your contractions, but something's kind of not adding up and we need to monitor yeah. everything anyway. So off I go down to the, but I remember, gosh, I mean, you leave your dignity at the door, don't you? When you go in. Well, I mean, if you take hospital. anything from this episode, it's leave your dignity and everything else at the door. It is. <laughs> I mean, I literally, bless my heart when I think about it, actually. But I'm being wheeled, wheeled down the corridor. And yeah, and, you know, sorry for, for information, but, you know, I'm kind of, I'm bleeding. I'm quite mm. exposed down there. And God, God help us if we were doing this at one o'clock in the afternoon, but it's like 1am, you know, somebody walking down the corridor with a cost of coffee, looking at me, coming, <laughs> 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 screaming, you know, you know, VJ on, uh, you know, on show. <laughs> Gosh, but um, got to the delivery suite, a uh, different set of people. And uh, good old Karen comes to me and goes, have you tried gas in there, Kelly? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Karen, I have tried it. Doesn't do anything. I might just try some me. paracetamol. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I mean, I can't. I was my eyes were rolling in the back of my head. I was in that much pain. Absolutely. I can't even. I can't remember the pain now, but I know it was absolutely horrific. Yeah. And I remember shouting. You know, I can't. I can't do it. I can't mm. do this. It, this is just. It's too much for me to cope. Um. And you know, bless Connor's like you know, can and encouraging etc. Oh, bless. I'm him. like reaching back and I rip the bed mattress apart off the bed literally like I split it because I'm that in that much pain oh my days a super well in strength um but and then Karen decides to get on top of me and straddle me and force gas and air down me and I'm like what are you doing <laughs> like I'm in shock like literally straddled on top of me on top of me um just trying to help me help me breathe like oh, because they gosh. were so abnormal I just couldn't I couldn't and they probably weren't breathe. used to dealing with it either no, I think she thought I was maybe just, I, w- I hadn't done my breathing or was trying, yeah. was, wasn't able to focus on my breathing, but it wasn't that. It's because my contractions were continuous and it's so intense that I couldn't do all that bloody hit the birthing stuff that I spent, you know, weeks reading about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, cut a long story short, had some pepidin, didn't really do much, and I'm still just, it's just going worse and worse um and connor literally begged them for to give me an epidural yeah and uh that was that was the next step but there was a barrier before that because of my thyroid they had to do blood tests to check everything was fine for whatever reason um, which you know is fine like they're just doing their job but at the yeah. time you're like come on people yeah and he was like <laughs> it'll be another 45 minutes before i can even do the procedure and uh, i just i think i died inside and bless, he was trying to have a conversation with me. I don't even know what he's talking about. I can't hear yeah. him. I'm I'm that away with the fairies. And he's Connor's talking for me. And he, he turns to Connor and goes, I think I'll come back and have a chat with her in about 45 minutes then. She might be feeling a little bit better then. <laughs> I was like, Connor's like, I don't think so. I think she's still going to be exactly the same, if not worse. Um, yeah. But we had the epidural 
and they had to give me medication actually to stop my contractions because they were just continuous so because obviously um epidural is quite a significant procedure isn't it in regards mm. to the placement of where it's going yeah um so <laughs> very traumatic and at this point also i will add i only reached five centimeters dilated oh. um so it was it was horrendous and i don't want to put anybody off but this is the reality of what yeah. i went through um to that point but you had an epidural didn't you with... yeah so i after my nine hours of being arrogant in the pool um <laughs> I, mean, oh, no, I, <laughs> I was i was dilating so at my examination i think i was eight or nine i think i was nine and i was like oh, i feel like i feel like i could push and she's like yeah go for it and i'm like oh my god this is happening and then obviously moving like a cow and push and i was standing <laughs> up because that's just how i felt comfortable i was like just holding on to mat and i was pushing and i was like mm, something just doesn't feel right mm. and she was like oh <laughs> it's just a weird you know weird sensation you've never felt it before that's what it is and i was like no 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 something doesn't feel right like I feel like my pelvis is about to shatter. It's the only way I could describe the really? searing pain in my pelvis. She was like, oh, it'll be okay. Just carry on. So continued to try. And again, every time it was just this pain in my pelvis. Like, I can't even describe it. Mm. It wasn't even the contraction like pain. It was just in, in my pelvis. And I know that I'd struggled with my with pelvic pain. Mm. And I thought, it, but it still seems way too intense for it not to be something else. Like something's yeah. going on. And it felt like, I, oh, I don't know how long I was pushing for it. It felt like, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. I don't know. Um, but it got to the point where I just said, I can't do this. It's not happening. I mean, this something doesn't feel right. I just, I can't do this. I need to go down to the labor ward because I'm now worried about baby because I'm pushing and nothing's happening. And obviously yeah. with when you have a water birth, baby isn't they check in with baby with like the um doppler but you're not monitored mm -hmm. so at this point i was getting panicky that something might be happening to baby so uh, she did another examination and i'd retracted to eight centimeters so she was like so you've mm, gone backwards yeah she was like okay mm -hmm. let's get you down to um the lay board and at this point like i said my contractions were really really intense painful i was exhausted and so I was on gas and air and I'm, it was because you mentioned gas and air. We, so we had to basically, I was wheeled to the lift and we had to go down two floors and wheeled to whatever the room was. And I had this gas and air and I'm obviously breathing on it. Now, obviously it's gas and air. So you're meant to breathe in between <laughs> having it. So I'm just on this gas and air and I'm on it continuously. And Matt goes, um, babe, shouldn't you have a break from it? And I remember having it in my mouth and looking at him like, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> so I just kept it in. And then obviously, because I'd done that and not had the air for a while, when I took it out to breathe, I was just violently sick um, mm. everywhere. So they put, basically pushed me into this room in the labor ward and I was just really, really violently ill. Um, so yeah, the dignity at the door. Um, Absolutely. Um, so then they um, put me on the hormone drip to try and then... I was mm -hmm. still having contractions, but obviously it had affected my dilation. So they gave me the hormone drip to try and kickstart the dilation, keep everything everything going. But again, at this point, I was just exhausted and oh, it was fine. You. They were trying to kickstart, so I still had all these contractions. And then I just said, can I just have the epidural because I've just, I don't know how long I can do this for. And they looked and I'd, gone, I'd retracted again to like seven centimeters and they mm. were like, We'll, we'll do this for another hour and then and I was like really really I'm already I'm already retracting quite a lot so is there any point but they did I had the epidural mm -hmm. and I was exhausted but again they just wanted to see now that sort of the the intensity was off for me a little bit yeah they then wanted to see if the dilation was was going to happen but it didn't so after a couple of hours with the hormone drip it just it wasn't happening so then I had the magic words of we're going to have to give you an emergency C-section because this it's it wouldn't be option. safe to use forceps or anything like that. And actually, my birth plan was water birth like mm -hmm. you, but I was very quick to say scrap anything that you need to. I because of what I, because of what had happened before my losses, I was like, I just want baby here. I literally don't yeah. care. Yeah. Ideally, I want a water birth, but I literally don't care. Do whatever you have to do. Yeah. Um. So. I think 
yeah, I weirdly favoured having a C-section over forceps and things like that because mm-hmm. for me, I thought once or something goes wrong, like for me that, and this is just my opinion, it's not a natural birth me if you have to start using other stuff I just it just didn't sit right with me so when they said emergency c-section I was like yep yeah, fine absolutely fine relieved, I, in a way. just yeah just I just want baby here now but at that point we were monitored and baby was you know we were both being monitored so I felt yeah sort of relief that he wasn't in distress and and everything like that so um yeah but obviously when they told you about the c-section how did you oh it was a little <laughs> bit different yeah. wasn't it yeah I mean I remember after having the epidural because i'm just just before that i remember my body started to push her out and i mm. had no control over it at all well you don't and that on no. the films and everything you know you're pushing but actually yeah. it it's involuntary like you don't do anything really you just weirdest have to breathe feeling in, it. in the entire yeah. world and it's one of those i can't remember my contractions pain but i can actually remember that sensation of pushing it was the weirdest thing and they kept telling me kelly stop stop pushing and i'm like I, i'm not because <laughs> I was only five centimetres dilated and she was, my body was trying to push her out of five centimetres, which obviously was causing quite a lot of trauma internally to Mm. me, hence the bleeding. Um, So yes, I had the epidural and it's funny you say about exhaustion because I remember looking at the clock once it had kicked in and it actually took about over an hour for it to kick in rather than I think about half an hour um, that was kind of expected. And I remember looking at the clock thinking it was like eight o'clock in the morning and I was like, oh my goodness, I... I haven't even done the hardest bit yet of getting her out yeah. of my body. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm absolutely exhausted. Like, I, I just can't do this. But epidural was a godsend in regards to calming those symptoms down, the symptoms down. But the contractions, intensity, everything was still going on in my body. Um, and at this point, I have, they thought I had gone up to seven centimeters. And I thought, oh my gosh. And everybody kept saying, again, you're having this baby. Gosh, like the most irritating sentence ever. Um, <laughs> And then somebody else came and checked and said, no, she's still only five centimetres. And, and we're talking like, we're in like 30 hours now, I believe. Yeah. And um, anyway, they were monitoring me. They were trying to get me, they were trying to move me into different positions. And I'm like, they're like, Kelly, can you just move onto your side? I'm like, <laughs> my legs are dead. I can't feel them. I can't move. But yeah, okay, I'll try. Um, so they were like trying to manoeuvre, manoeuvre me onto oh, my side God. because I didn't realise at the time, but um Mila was in a lot of distress and I was as well. So her heart mm. rate, heart rate kept dropping. But when they moved me, it would come back up again. But my wow. heart rate was sky high, um, over 200. So they were monitoring it, but it just kept dragging on quite a long time. And mm. I think poor Connor was going out of his mind thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, I just, something needs to be done, surely. Um, yeah. And then it got to the point where Mila's heart rate dropped and wouldn't come back up. And mine was like over way over I think like 220 or something and I remember them just pushing the red button and the consultant turned to me and said Kelly we're bailing we're at a position now where either you're going to die your baby's going to die or you're both going to die and in that moment I literally it makes me feel um I know I can't believe emotional thinking about it because I was I've never been that scared in my entire life and but ironically, Connor, it was the most relieved he'd been during the whole labour because he said, now something I feel is going to be done yeah. and yeah. going to be looked after and sorted out. And I have to say, everything's chaos. You know, all these people are in the room. There's so yeah. many people. Running in and out. Connor's gone. I'm like, where's Connor gone? He's gone to get scrubs on. I'm being wheeled out. And I have to mm-hmm. say, though, when I got into that theatre, the team of people there were absolutely phenomenal yeah and I mean next level the anesthetist was just like stroking my face because I was shaking I was uncontrollably Mm. shaking because I think my adrenaline my panic I was crying my eyes out because I was so scared and you know I think uh, on reflection the language that was used to tell me that what was happening or what their concerns were could have been better Um, yeah Again, I think, like, you know, I guess if they need you because you have to sign the paperwork for a C-section. So yeah. that's something that I didn't realize either. So even though you're pumped full of everything and let's say not really with it, yeah. you essentially have to sign this paperwork that says if anything goes wrong, you know, yeah. because the hospital have to cover themselves. And Matt couldn't believe it because he's like, mm. how on earth are you signing? You're, you can barely even say your own name. Like, how are you having to sign such important, you know, documentation? Yeah. But I guess in the moment they just have to do you know say whatever they can or have to yeah. to 
make you realise that this is what they need to do, I guess. I know, I think it would have been better if they said maybe, you know, there's a risk, Kelly, of you, know, yeah, I mean, you and your baby. We've just yeah. got to intervene now. Um, rather than better ways it could have been put. Yeah, rather than put it in that way. But I was an absolute wreck. Um, mm. But Connor was the calmest he'd ever been because I said he was relieved that something was being done. Yeah. And as soon as I was in there, and I have to say, I think it was something ridiculous, like six minutes or something. And she oh, yeah. was out. And it was, oh my God, she's got so much hair. <laughs> And she did. <laughs> and she was here, luckily, very safe. She came and she was absolutely fine. But I have to say it was one of the most, dist- well, it was the dis- most distressing time of my life. Um, of course. And for Connor, for, for both of us. So, yeah, that's that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, with George, I mean, we then went into theatre and I think Matt, again, felt, I mean, ours wasn't as traumatic as yours with George, but it still wasn't, you know, hugely positive. But Mm. again, Matt felt relieved because he was like, right, this team are going to take over. I know baby's going to be here, Yeah, you know, soon. Laura's going to be fine. The anaesthetists, again, the team were incredible. I could not fault them. The anaesthetists literally, again, like you, I was crying. So at this Mm. point, you know, you're exhausted. You're not quite sure what's happening yeah um and I have really low blood sugars so and I had obviously hadn't eaten in you know nearly 20 hours now and (laughs) my cup of tea had worn off um (laughs) (laughs) so um yeah but he was brilliant he was like literally you just tell me and I can literally make anything go away he's like I will sort anything for you and I was like well I have eaten my blood sugar he said don't worry literally whatever he did he's like sorted tell me if you feel sick tell me anything he was just so good Mm. I'm going to talk to you the whole time baby's absolutely fine this is going so well he honestly I amazing he was just incredible I can't you know I wish I knew who he was to like thank him um and we didn't find out the gender and so when they then lifted baby out they let Matt um reveal the gender but the cord was in the way so Matt was going uh um uh, I was like what what and he was like oh my god it's a boy and I was like oh my god and I'll always remember that moment but really important to say as well is I obviously like you see in the films baby cries straight away yeah like George didn't so my it was my worst nightmare was that obviously something had happened so because he wasn't crying so I then was hysterical and I'm like why is that crying why is that crying I'm like grabbing the knees it's like why is my baby not crying he was like look with a c-section they are shocked into birth almost mm-hmm. so it takes them at least a minute two minutes to just get accustomed and then he said don't worry literally three two one and then George screamed and I was Aww. like oh my god Thank and goodness. I just cried my eyes out because again I didn't know that that happened with a c-section that they didn't cry straight away you just well, assume no, that's that... what you just assume what you see is yeah. what happens isn't it but that's and that's good to know I think that's good for others to know as well not to yeah. panic in that situation is it absolutely but then he came out and his head was really slanted well like a um, cone was it yeah almost yeah 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 which I know you can get from forceps if they have to use something to mm. intervene so when they lifted him out he was nine pound three and Ooh. Thank I mean, God. You can't really tell here, but I'm only five foot two. <laughs> and they literally went, yeah, no chance he was coming naturally. So, and that's what the pain was in my pelvis. He was stuck. Wow. So he just, that's why I was getting that searing pain because he was lodged and couldn't, there was no way I was going to birth him naturally. So that hypnobirthing, you'll never grow a baby you can't birth. Well, higher. <laughs> I managed it. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so, but that was Aww. also a relief that I was like, right, it wasn't anything I did. It yeah. wasn't that I failed. It was that I had to have it. I had to give birth this way because there was no other, you know, physical, natural way that I could I could do it. But well, he arrived safely. And yeah. So um, with Isla, mm. <laughs> completely different, <laughs> completely different birth. Glorious. So, <laughs> yeah, well, because of what had happened, obviously with George, I then opted for um, a C-section, yeah. a planned C-section, because I thought I'm obviously going to have big babies, so that's fine. But we know that I can't do it, so that's also fine. Mm-hmm. And I was actually okay with that decision. Um, the difference, what I wanted for this time though, was I booked my C-section in after my due date, yeah. because for me, I wanted to go into labour. 
and then have the c-section now i was told i'd made that up that's not actually a birth option um <laughs> i was like Oh, makes sense though okay, that makes sense naturally like so yeah. she was ready do you know what i mean well that's what i wanted i didn't want it to happen any earlier now i naively thought they started as early as 37 weeks they don't so they don't actually book you in mm. until 39 weeks that's the earliest you can have a planned c-section okay because of the development of the lungs again i didn't know that so they don't do it any earlier so i went for 40 and a bit um so yeah but again with Isla I had the Braxton Hicks and then I went for my pre-op on the Monday and I was knew I was in slow labor so mm. like the bi- same build up I'd had with George so I felt good because I was like okay great like you know, baby's yeah. ready this makes me feel really good but I was told that plan A was obviously that I'd have my book c-section everything would be great plan yeah. B was that I'd go into labor and then I'd be classed as an emergency c-section but mm-hmm. I would have the c-section like I planned and I was like, okay, I can deal with plan B. And plan C was you could go into labour and it could happen so quick that you can't have a C-section. Oh, gosh, really? Like, well, yeah, because they're like, if you're too far gone, then it's too it's late. It's not safe to do it. Yeah, it's not safe to do a C-section. And I was like, oh, I don't really like plan C. They were like, yeah, <laughs> it's less than 10%, but we've got to tell you that that okay, could happen. Yeah. So then I started thinking, why on earth did I book it past my due date? Like, what an idiot. Um, so when I was having these contractions and this slow labor, I was thinking, oh, like I've really gone and done it now. Like again, this will be karma. Um, mm. So I went for my pre-op on the Monday and I said, I said to Matt, like, we'll take all the stuff because like, they might just keep me in and just mm-hmm. bump it up and just do the, you know, to save me going into labor and risking yeah, yeah. plan C. They might just, you know, just keep me in. Um, so this, this nurse was doing all the pre-op stuff and I was like oh oh sorry just having a contraction Ooh. <laughs> and then uh, I was like oh so will I still be you know what happens I'm clearly in some sort of labour and she goes oh well we might see you before Wednesday then right oh. I'm all done I was like is that it? No. <laughs> yeah I was Hi. like no. yeah it's like surely surely you're gonna keep me but no they didn't and luckily I had out to the Wednesday um so the plan C-section, yeah, we went in in the morning and there were three sort of scheduled C-sections. We were the third and we weren't told. So we were just in this room for hours, but we had our own room. Um, mm-hmm. And then they came in, they're like, oh, it's your turn. We're like, yes, well, we guessed as the times had ticked by and we weren't we weren't chosen. Yeah. Um, but it was so weird because I was given my gown. Matt was given his scrubs. We walked Sad. into the theatre. Really? And I was then petrified and they're like, Are you okay? I was like, Well, last time I was here, I just had no idea what was going on. No. And I was like, Now I'm very aware of what is going on and now I'm terrified. So I had to have the um, the spinal. Yeah. And I just remember my mum saying, The needle is huge. <laughs> and I was like, Obviously, with George, pff, couldn't even tell you. No. And, and I was just, out of everything, I was just really worried about this this needle. And mm. I'm not even scared of needles, but because my mum had made such a thing of it, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> But then the woman dropped, it was in the case, obviously, but she dropped it. And I oh. saw it and I was like, oh, oh. <gasps> oh my gosh, it is huge. Um, obviously, they numb the area. You barely even feel it. It's just a bit of pressure. That's it. I'm glad that I didn't the see the needle. Nervous... I'm glad I didn't no. see the needle. No. But that was the most nervous thing I was about the whole thing. And it was absolutely fine. And again, the team were incredible. But it was just, I started crying because I was just like. Mm, it's all motions, everything. Well, I'm just aware of what's going yeah. on. And again, the anaesthetist was great. She was chatting to me. Um, obviously, they did all the, the numbing tests and stuff, which again, with George, I had no recollection whatsoever. Um, but she was talking to me. And then they all stopped. And I was like, what's happened? Like, oh, we just like pierced your stomach really, really hard to see if you could feel anything. Clearly, you didn't. So the numbing, <laughs> the numbing's worked. We'll get started. And that's how casual it was. And I was just God, like, that's this so is different. So weird. And me and Matt are just having a chat. And um, again, we didn't find out um, gender. So again, they they asked if we wanted a drop the curtain or a Lion King. They call it. So really? when they came over, I was like. Matt looked at me and was like, you are not dropping that curtain. I <laughs> saw enough last time. I am not doing this again. So we went for a Lion King. And, um, Love that. They lifted, they lifted baby over. Now, we were convinced we were having a boy. Like, I'd washed all of George's clothes. They were in the wardrobe of the nursery. I'd packed all blue stuff. And they lifted baby over. And, um, again, called them away. And <laughs> I was, like, looking. And I was, like, mm. I was, like, I'm looking, obviously, for a boy. And I was just like, uh, sh- can't really and Matt went oh my god again and I was like what he's like it's a girl we've got a girl and I oh my well they had to stop what they were doing because I was like 
just mm. beside myself. And then they weighed her and went, £7.14. And oh, I went, what? That's a bit different. <laughs> what? And they're like, that's a really good weight. But it's not £9.3 though, is it? <laughs> they're like, what do you mean? I was like, well, I could have gone natural, could I, with a £7-pounder? <laughs> and they're like, a bit late for that. <laughs> just a bit late a bit now. Late yeah Aww. but again the team were amazing so the experience second time around the plan c-section was so different and mm. it was so much more positive the team were great we were looked after and obviously we didn't have all that trauma and stress beforehand so yeah, yeah. it was and if we were to have another one which we won't i would 100 percent go plan c-section route again especially with a toddler at home we could yeah. plan when it was i mean obviously it nearly didn't happen then but you can plan childcare and things like that logistics wise yeah it just really suited us it so, worked for um, you yeah i'm really pleased that we did that second time it was really really positive so. well, i um i remember at the end after mila was born and a consultant came in and he said you need to listen to me carefully now I'm like, ah, I'm still like, you know, <laughs> I've just had a baby, leave me alone. Um, 33 hours, you know, give me a break. And he was like, if you are going to have another baby, I went, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you for a second because I am not doing this again. And he's like, ha ha, like everybody says that. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm deadly serious. Look at Connor, like march him in, get a hysterectomy now. <laughs> hysterectomy? No, that's me. <laughs> that's what <laughs> Vasectomy, dear. Vasectomy, oh crikey. Um, and he said, no, if you, I've got to tell you that you can't get pregnant for two years. Um, and Connor didn't tell me, obviously, at the time, but because, you know, when you talked about your body not being able to physically birth mm. um, George. Yeah. Well, the consultant had told Connor that basically the problem with my body was my cervix didn't dilate so I only got to five centimeters in 33 hours like my right. only half of my cervix dilated I didn't even know that was possible so no, I didn't. No. and he said that um they were concerned that there was because she was trying to be pushed out uh, mm. five centimeters and there was a lot of trauma going on so they had to check when they were doing my c-section that they didn't have to do a hysterectomy um at that time because so of that the was, damage yeah because of the damage oh but God. luckily they said that it looks like it sh I should be fine. So, but you needed that time to heal and yeah. just make sure before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but well, they do recommend that anyway the, to wait yeah. two years or not have another one, another C section within two years because I know with there's two and a half years between George and Isla. So, mm -hmm. I had a few questions put my way when I opted for a C section. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's it's because of the scar tissue and things like that though because obviously they go in the same incision if they can yes um for the c-section so they want to make sure they do the least damage possible if that makes sense yeah well i think i sure i just never thought i was very naive in regards to you know what could happen during childbirth and the cervix not dilating completely only half i didn't even no was possible well clearly neither did i mate just so arrogant <laughs> strutting into that water birth thinking i'll be home for tea to you know put x factor on and chill out goodness me but i think that's it isn't it there's so many different ways birth can go and that's why we will get other people on to tell their stories as well because it can go it can go really naturally and quickly and you yep. can have that lovely experience um which we'll be very jealous of when we talk to those people <laughs> me well not like them at all oh i will but i will say a real positive um the one positive thing that came out apart from mila of the birth was um when mila was born we actually organized for her stem cells to be extracted from the umbil umbilical cord i don't know if you've ever heard i of didn't that. even know that was a thing yeah so obviously stem cells are very precious and yeah. they help you know they have the ability to, to repair um and protect the body uh, so it's more of an insurance thing so god forbid anything would ever happen to me you know, in regards to getting any rare disease or any kind of blood cancers anything like that but that's what it's there for um we've had them frozen that god forbid if she ever did become very poorly with a condition like that you know i think they're even talking about um gains in research around alzheimer's and parkinson's and treatment of stem cells that we have those there 
just in case. So that's incredible. Yeah, it's good. We used a company called Future Health Biobank, um, who were amazing. We met them in London at um, a baby show we went to, and it was absolutely amazing. You know, the, the, the poor guy actually that came to extract them. Obviously, you have to tell them as soon as you go into labour, you have their number and you ring them to say, I'm in labour. Well, you know, 33 loud. Oh. <laughs> He's yeah. there like. He's raging. <laughs> so sorry oh poor guy um oh, bless him. yeah they came and uh and extracted them and they are frozen now so it's just wow. it's an insurance thing yeah so that is definitely worth showing because i didn't even know that was a thing yeah yeah really interesting there's there's lots of information around it if uh, anybody's interested but um yeah we have that as a bit of insurance that was a positive I think definitely. Yeah, to, definitely. To and actually, I think it's worth knowing, saying about the umbilical cord as well. So we wanted delayed cord clumping. Yeah, um, that as well. And yep. you, can, you can have that with a C-section. So I know some yep. people think that might be out the window, but it's not. So you can definitely have that. And the skin to skin straight after, things like that. So if you have an emergency C-section or a planned C-section um, for your first birth, then just rest assured that those things can still happen as well. Yeah. Um, shall we go on to some questions from our listeners? Yeah. So we'd like to post this on our Instagram, sort of what topic we are going to discuss mm-hmm. and then ask for some questions. So the first question, what did you pack in your hospital bag? And we had quite a few hospital bag mm. questions. So maybe give us, Kel, your top three things that you packed. Oh, gosh. That you'd recommend. I mean, I was that person that I literally had everything in that bag and used pretty much nothing. nothing. <laughs> So, okay, top top three, top three. Yeah. Um, Okay, my first one, my first one would be, um, you know, sandwich bags, like, but larger ones. (laughs) This is not for snacks. (laughs) No, in all seriousness, you know, when you've obviously clothes for the baby, so you have, you know, a little vest, sleep suit, etc. I was very organised and I put them all into like a sandwich bag, like a large sandwich bag and labeled them what exactly was in there, what size they were. Cause I wasn't sure how big she was going to be. Oh, yeah, And yeah, it yeah. was honestly the best thing because I was, I didn't expect to have a C-section because I couldn't maneuver in out, in and out of bed. And obviously Con unfortunately mm-hmm. couldn't be there all the time in hospital because of COVID rules. Um, I could just go to the midwives. They said, you know, if they wanted to change her, Oh, there's a, there's a package there, you know, it's all labelled up. It's exactly oh, what's in there. So yeah. Good. So that was really useful. Super organised. So you're not kind of scrambling through your suitcase thinking, is that vest? What size is this? What you know, yeah. I had a mixture of of different sizes. Um, so that's probably my first tip, that one. That's a really good one. Second one, second one. Um I would say, do you know what? I'd say something very basic like lip balm because my oh, lips lip was, balm was definitely going to be mine yeah, yeah so my lips got so dry I think during yeah. the whole trauma of, of birth etc and you know you just want that little bit of nourishment um so yeah. lip balm is definitely was definitely on my list and I say the third one I'd say a dark nighty I mean yeah. I look like an age old woman in mine um <laughs> and probably as a combo for that like big pants oh, that yeah. might be a fourth but big pants because you're going to be wearing a hammock of a pad after yeah. giving birth um whichever way you give birth and even so. with c-section yeah yeah which i was shocked um yeah. so dark nighty none of this lovely white nighty stuff because you know there is a bit of aftermath after birth yeah absolutely no those are good tips. yes i think well lip balm i was going to say that too but yeah, comfy clothes. Like I don't know where these. I mean, fair play to those that have like leaving hospital outfits. For, oh, I mean, goodness. for baby, yeah. But for you, oh, I think I was in Matt's trackers, and <laughs> <laughs> well, I was with Isla. For George, it was so hot because it was summer. I literally just had this dress on, and I don't mean like a Kate Middleton gorgeous dress. I mean like back of the wardrobe, <laughs> the biggest thing I could find. <laughs> like, Tent. Yeah, literally. Hey, I um, I so, left yeah. hospital in my nighty. <laughs> Oh, well, there they we walked go, out so. in the night with stockings, like waddling out. <laughs> Christ, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I yeah, just be kind to yourself and make sure you are comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think with Isla, I put baby's stuff in one suitcase and all of my stuff in another. Mm-hmm. Whereas with George, it was like a bit of a mix and match. I don't know why. I was just 
clearly just not prepared but mm-hmm. a, a little bit like like it was just a lot easier to say right baby stuff's in that my stuff's in there so just keep it separate because then you it's just easier yeah definitely for when you need to get to things quickly and if you've had a c-section you just mm-hmm. can't move that well good um okay second question were you anxious before mm. the birth oh gosh hell yes yeah yeah um agree a bit like this is going to sound probably a little bit superficial but the things I were anxious about was not really anything that happened during my birth it was I was very anxious about oh my gosh am I going to tear am I going to be able to you know ever yeah. walk again um yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's a good thing about c-section guys everything's so well yeah that's, yeah that's true yeah <laughs> could have done with a tummy tuck while she was there but you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just so a little bit tighter. Yeah, any chance? Oh, any chance? Can you just add that in there? Um, yeah, yeah, the same. I think for for George, yeah, obviously it's just the unknown, isn't it? Being your first, you've literally got no idea what could happen. Mm-hmm. For Isla, I didn't have that. Obviously, plan C section. My panic and my anxiety was if I have to try and do natural one because at, in Oxfordshire they do a thirty six week scan. Mm-hmm. So for growth purposes, because they can then, um, if it's a smaller baby or a small size, they'll monitor you because That's obviously good. it's concerning. Yeah, but they, Isla was weighing the same as George at that scan. And I know they're not 100% accurate, mm. but for me, I was like, brilliant. So, and I was huge again. So I was like, clearly it's another, you know, <laughs> nine pounder. Obviously it wasn't. Um, but I was then panicking because I thought it was such a big baby that if, if I did go into full blown labour and it was, too late for a c-section what was i going to do so Mm -hmm. that was my my main anxiety with isla um compared to all of the unknown yeah i felt a bit more prepared with that side of things um it is a it's an anxious time because you don't know what to expect and now i mean i feel like with mine anything that could go wrong basically went wrong um and you're never prepared for that but i think you know talking about it like this is hopefully useful to people not to scare yeah. them but just to no, say you know, these not. things happen but luckily we're very lucky we both had you know a very healthy babies um in the end yeah. so absolutely those, and that is we? that is we did i'm we never did. doing have... it again by the way so <laughs> me neither we have three gorgeous gorgeous little babies so we did. yeah we are very very lucky but that is the end of this episode Yay. so thank you so much for listening and we will speak to you all soon speak to you soon